I'm Matt Menard. Coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, I'll tell you about an explosive Mountaineer reunion that's brought arena football to the Mountain State. I'm Abby Backenstow, and coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, I'll tell you about West Virginia's oldest rivalry. Straight ahead on Mountaineer Playbook, I'm Julia Millett, and I'll take you between the lines and behind the scenes of Neil Brown's offense. What's up, Mountaineer Nation? I'm Bree Clark, and you're watching Mountaineer Playbook. And I'm Michael Rinker. In our top story, we'll have your first look at the football team under a new head coach. And we'll show you how a Mountaineer squad is competing for a national championship. He's WVU's 35th head football coach, and when he first took the job here, Neil Brown said, quote, West Virginia is culture, vision, and passion. It fits my DNA. Sports reporter Julia Mellett got the inside scoop on what to expect from the Mountaineers under this new leadership, going into the gold-blue game. When Neil Brown was hired as head coach, his offensive coaching staff came highly touted. A West Virginia offense that had 6,100 yards of total offense and 4,200 receiving yards in 2018 and a quarterback battle in 2019 created competition for starting spots. Rotating the guys in, that's the main thing. When you can rotate the guys in and you know, give them reps with the ones and the, and the twos and stuff, uh, you know, that helps because you can see how they go against some of the better guys you know, that are with the first groups on the other side. But um, you know, they're all doing a heck of a job. This staff prioritizes watching film to show the athletes the intensity they bring. On offense, it's got to be everybody doing their job. We said we brought the whole offense in. We watched film together yesterday, and we, we had several examples of like, hey, here's nine guys doing a great job, but there's two guys not doing their job, and it's minus four. Moore has coached nationally ranked O-lines at Troy and is ready to take on the remains of Wickline's guys. Moore's offensive lines have been ranked sixth in the nation in efficiency, but they're not sending so many WVUs. The current team is transitioning to a step-by-step -step motivation mindset, bolstering competition. You know, everyone wants to skip from point A to point M and N and L and B. You know, they want to get all the way to the end of the alphabet. But there's a lot of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And unless you take care of those, you're not going to get there to what like, like you want to. The offense will be out in full force on April 13th for the spring game at 1 p.m. For Mountaineer Playbook, I'm Julia Mellon. As some new Mountaineers are trying to create a legacy, some former Mountaineers are getting back on the field. The West Virginia Rough Riders of the American Arena League started their inaugural season in Wheeling, West Virginia. Matt Menard joins us now from Studio B with some familiar faces that made their way back to the gridiron. Matt? So who exactly are the West Virginia Rough Riders? Well, they're a professional indoor football team based in Wheeling, West Virginia. They were founded in 2016 in Virginia and played there until last year. But they've moved to the Mountain State and they're bringing back arena football in a big way. Country roads have taken home a group of former WVU stars. The Rough Riders stocked up on former Mountaineers this offseason. Leading the pack is former quarterback Jarrett Brown. He is joined by former running back Noel Devine, defensive backs Robert Sands and Ellis Langster, and defensive lineman Larry Ford. Devine says the bonds they formed in college are still intact. Uh, I never would have thought we would have an opportunity to play football together in the state of West Virginia where we played college ball at in the same state. Um, it feels great um, to take the field again, and um, we always got each other back when we were on the field. These Rough Riders first made names for themselves right here at Milan Pushkar Stadium. During their time at WVU, they adopted a Mountaineer mentality that's followed them to Wheeling a decade later. This is great. It's a tremendous opportunity, um, again, to bring us to the um, great state of West Virginia. It's a blue collar um, state, and uh, we bring that physicality that the fans love. And that's what, the, um, that's what they need. That's what they want. That physicality has helped the team get off to a hot start, and they're having plenty of fun along the way. Devine believes this could be an extra special experience for WVU fans. A great excitement, a great time for guys to come out, especially a Mountaineer fans. Um, we know all about the culture and tradition here in uh, West Virginia, so we're just trying to pave the way and set that standard here and willing. The Rough Riders season may have just began, but these proud Mountaineers are determined to make a statement and make the Rough Riders a West Virginia staple. Rough Riders president Greg Fornari says the team is happy and excited to call Wheeling home. Fornari goes on to say the Rough Riders will not only be an entertainment option for the area, but also a helping hand in the community. Now back to you at the Waterfront Studio. Thanks, Matt. The WVU baseball team renewed its rivalry with the University of Pittsburgh on April 3rd. Reporter Abby Backenso was there, along with the packed house, to win as the Backyard Brawl's newest chapter. The oldest and most played rivalry in WVU program history goes by the Backyard Brawl. 
Dating back to 1895, when the Mountaineers and the Panthers first met on the football field, the two soon became conference rivals. It's one of the greatest sport rivalry in sports, in my opinion. Um, I've grown up coming to backyard brawls you know, since I was a little guy. Um, so it's a very special, a lot of grit, a lot of determination here. The WVU and Pitt baseball teams met for the 196th time on April 3rd. The tradition is so important to West Virginia fans that it drew the largest home crowd in program history at the Mon County Ballpark. With 3,487 fans, there was no doubt both teams could feel the momentum. So when they saw the crowd filing in, you know, they knew it was going to be a big crowd and, and uh, great energy. The weather was good. Uh, you don't have to get our guys up for this game at all. Same way you don't have to get their guys up. It was a... It was a great game to watch. It's just a good college baseball game. The Mountaineers scored a late run in the eighth inning to secure a 5-4 win. WVU won the last five against Pitt and increased its all-time series record to 107-88. For Mountaineer Playbook, I'm Abby Backenstow. The Mountaineers and the Panthers will also be competing in another sport, Bree. That's right, Michael. The WVU competitive cheerleading squad has poured their blood, sweat, and tears into preparing for this year's national competition in Daytona Beach, Florida. I went to their latest practice to find out more. The WVU competitive cheer team has been gearing up for this year's competition at Nationals. After coming in second place last season and losing by a half of a point, this squad was determined to set themselves apart and make it all the way for this year's competition. We improved difficulty. We've, clean, we've been cleaning up a lot of things, just like working on like the little things that we didn't score as well on last year. It's increased difficulty on the mat that's going to set them apart from their competition at Nationals. With 31 girls on the squad, Team Unity helps this bunch stick together through the good and bad. I think what sets us apart from the other teams is our bond. I think this year we came in from our team last year really close, and I think we're a big sisterhood, and I think that helps us in our performance. On top of being full-time students, these girls practice three to four times a week, all year long, proving they have what it takes to take home the gold. Every day I think to myself, I don't know what I would be if I was on this team, and if I didn't make the decision to try out, I would probably regret it once I graduated. The team left for nationals on April 3rd and competed in a two-day competition at the band show in Daytona Beach, Florida. The WVU competitive cheer team finished fourth out of 14 teams with a score of 96.36, less than one point from the top squad. The number of women in weightlifting is also on the rise. The WVU weightlifting club has been expanding rapidly under the leadership of President Abigail Tice. Tice has led the way for the Mountaineers in what normally is viewed as a male-dominated sport. The WVU weightlifting club practices five days a week, with Tice helping other women gain confidence in the sport. Tice recently qualified for and competed at the University and Under-25 Championships in Las Vegas, Nevada. Since Tice was named president, the WVU weightlifting club has also seen an increase in female participants. In fact, today there are more women on the team than men. Don't leave just yet. We still have much more for you on this week's edition of Mountaineer Playbook. Coming up next, find out how a group of WVU athletes are using their platform to support a good cause. And later, we'll discuss which Mountaineer team hits the Mon River before sunrise. I'm Michael Rinker. Coming up on Mountaineer Playbook, I'll show you how the WVU rowing team is winning in the spring season. We conquer mountains. But that's not why they call us Mountaineers. It's because we don't let anything stand in our way. We build what's never been built. Seek cures for the incurable. And go first into undiscovered frontiers. We are mountaineers, and impossible is just another mountain to climb. Welcome back to Mountaineer Playbook. There's a WVU women's team that's beginning to gain notoriety in the Big 12. It starts with the morning sunrise and a beautiful view of the river. It's a sport that many of us aren't too familiar with. It's WVU rowing. I recently hit the water to find out what they're all about. The dedication and time needed to be a Division I athlete is immense. The rowing team faces those challenges in and out of the water. Freshman Emma Toy has had to adjust whether she likes it or not. Because waking up early every morning and then doing hard work like before everyone else is awake is like it kind of just gets to a point where it's just so hard but um, then you find like some sort of beauty in it and you know you remind yourself like why you do it. Junior rower Hannah Simmerly has been on the team for the last three years. 
She says it's important to have high energy in this type of sport. Trying to be as positive as I can, like trying to be a positive leader and like trying to like let the girls follow me in the right direction. The WV rowing team worked hard all fall and winter season to get to this point in the spring season. However, the team has majority of its events still left on the schedule, including the Big 12 race late in May. WVU head coach Jimmy King knows that the road to the top can be long and difficult. And in general, uh, that's what we're trying to do with all the Big 12 teams, close, close the gap. Because we are uh, at the bottom right now and working our way up. And, and so, you know, one stroke at a time. Going deep, not to get to where they want, freshman Kelsey Getz knows where the team needs to be mentally. Um, our team's really been focusing a lot on keeping our mentality up and like staying positive because we're definitely physically capable of doing anything that we can put our mind to. And for these group of rowers, they say early morning practices and mental battles are worth it if the result is a Big 12 title. Approximately 1 in 59 children are diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. And now, WVU athletes are using their platforms to raise awareness. April 2nd was World Autism Awareness Day, and the WVU Medicine Children's Neurodevelopmental Center joined forces with WV Athletics to host the Light It Up Blue Family Fun event. Events were held at multiple locations across the Morgantown area, including Ruby Memorial Hospital. Athletes hosted families with obstacle courses and games. WVU researchers say that having athletes promote events like these are a great way to increase awareness and engage the community. A great event for a great cause. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of Mountaineer Playbook. Don't miss out on a chance to catch the WVU baseball team as they start a three-game series with the Texas Tech Red Raiders on April 12th at Mon County Ballpark. I'm Michael Drinker. And I'm Bree Clark. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.